China has officially begun building its first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the Type 004. And experts say it could rival the U.S. Navy's cutting-edge Ford-class carriers. This ship isn't just another step in China's fleet. It represents a leap in technology, scale, and global reach. With nuclear propulsion, electromagnetic catapults, and the capacity to carry more than 90 aircraft, it promises to reshape maritime power projection. China's Type 004 project marks an extraordinary technological step, aiming to bring the nation into the ranks of full nuclear carrier capability. Reports confirm that the ship will have a displacement of between 110,000 and 120,000 tons, making it the largest vessel China has ever constructed. Measuring approximately 330 to 340 meters in length, it will surpass the size of its predecessor, the Fujin, and closely approach the dimensions of the U.S. Navy's Gerald R. Ford-class carriers. One of the defining aspects of the Type 004 is its nuclear propulsion system. Unlike China's earlier carriers, which rely on conventional fuel, the Type 004 will draw power from twin navalized reactors believed to be based on the long-way pressurized water reactor family. Together, these reactors are expected to generate around 450 to 500 megawatts of power, not only for propulsion but also for advanced shipboard systems and other onboard applications. This capability opens up an unlimited operational range, enabling sustained deployments far beyond China's near seas. The Type 004 will also debut a Catabar, Catapult Assisted Takeoff, Barrier Arrested Recovery, deck system, equipped with electromagnetic launchers. This is a departure from the ski jump ramps used by Liaoning and Shandong, which limited the payload of carrier-based aircraft. Electromagnetic catapults enable fully armed aircraft, including J-15T heavy fighters, fifth-generation J-35 stealth jets, KJ-600 early warning aircraft, and future unmanned systems to take off with maximum fuel and weapon load, dramatically extending the reach and versatility of the carrier's air wing. With a projected complement of over 90 fixed-wing aircraft, the Type 004 far exceeds the earlier Chinese carrier's capacities of around 40 to 70 aircraft. Beyond sheer numbers, this diverse mix of fighters, stealth aircraft, early warning planes, and drones ensures operational flexibility. Importantly, the inclusion of fixed-wing airborne early warning aircraft, something impossible on ski jump carriers, signals China's intention to achieve persistent situational awareness at sea. To understand the Type 004's potential, it helps to compare it directly to its most obvious benchmark, the U.S. Navy's Gerald R. Ford class. Both carriers share several headline features, nuclear propulsion, electromagnetic catapults, and a flight deck optimized for high-tempo operations. But the similarities also highlight important contrasts in scale, technology, and operational experience. The Ford class, led by USS Gerald R. Ford, is powered by two A1B reactors that together generate more than 700 megawatts of electricity. This is significantly higher than the 450 to 500 megawatts projected for the Type 004. That surplus capacity allows the Ford to easily support electromagnetic launch systems, advanced radar, and potentially future directed energy technologies. In contrast, while China's design will almost certainly enable its electromagnetic systems, it will need careful integration to match the high energy demands of next generation sensors and weapons. On the flight deck, both carriers will operate electromagnetic launch systems. The Ford's MALS, Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, has been tested and refined through years of U.S. Navy development. At the same time, the Type 004 system is believed to be an indigenous Chinese design inspired by MALS but developed independently. The Ford class is designed for up to 160 sorties per day in surge conditions, thanks to advanced arresting gear, new weapons elevators, and optimized deck layouts. Whether the Type 004 can reach similar sortie rates remains to be seen, given that it will be China's first attempt to manage such complex operations. Aircraft composition is another clear comparison point. The Ford class typically carries around 75 aircraft, including F-35C stealth fighters, E-2D advanced Hawkeye early warning aircraft, 
and EA-18G Growler electronic attack jets. These platforms provide a multi-layered combination of stealth strike capability, long-range surveillance, and electronic disruption. The Chinese Type 004, by contrast, is expected to carry over 90 aircraft, potentially giving it numerical advantage. Yet sheer numbers don't tell the whole story. The Ford class benefits from more than a century of U.S. carrier aviation experience, extensive training infrastructure, and global logistics support. The strategic implications of the Type 004 are as significant as its technical features. If it becomes fully operational, this carrier could redefine how China engages in maritime operations far from its shores. For decades, China's naval activity was focused primarily on regional waters, but the Type 004 positions it for a true blue water presence. Nuclear propulsion allows the ship to operate for extended periods without refueling, giving China an unprecedented ability to sustain operations in the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, or beyond. Equally important is the potential for the Type 004 to serve as the centerpiece of a modern carrier strike group. According to reports, it will be escorted by advanced warships such as the Type 055AB destroyers, the Type 054B frigates, and the upcoming Type 095 nuclear-powered attack submarines. This mirrors the structure of U.S. Navy strike groups which combine a supercarrier with powerful surface escorts and submarines to create a layered, self-sustaining formation. The ability to field such groups would enable China to conduct extended operations in contested regions while maintaining strong defensive and offensive layers. From a regional perspective, the Indo-Pacific balance could shift. The U.S. Navy has long maintained a dominant role in these waters, supported by its global logistics system and extensive alliances. The arrival of a Chinese nuclear supercarrier means the U.S. would no longer be the only nation with global-scale carrier capability. This may not immediately displace U.S. advantages, but it complicates planning, requires more resources to maintain presence, and signals that competition is no longer symbolic but material. The Type 004 also demonstrates the maturity of China's industrial and scientific ecosystem. Building a nuclear-powered surface ship involves challenges in reactor safety, miniaturization, and integration with shipboard systems. It also requires specialized training for thousands of crew members. Achieving all of this indicates significant progress in China's naval engineering capacity. These advancements can spill over into other projects, including submarines, civilian nuclear systems, and energy technologies. Of course, the project also carries risks. Constructing a nuclear carrier is one thing. Operating it safely and efficiently across decades is another. It demands institutional knowledge, global support bases, and advanced pilot training programs. Still, the symbolism of the Type 004 is powerful. It reflects China's intention to step onto the global stage with the kind of sustained maritime presence once reserved for the United States. The Type 004 is more than just another carrier. It represents China's bold step into the nuclear supercarrier era. With its scale, advanced launch systems, and global endurance, it has the potential to reshape the balance of power at sea. Yet questions remain about how quickly China can master the complexities of such an ambitious platform. What's clear is that this marks the beginning of a new chapter in global naval competition, one that the world will closely watch. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.